Okay, thanks for coming. Uh, so I'm David Disseldorp, and I'm going to talk about a Hack Week project I worked on, which is uh, a Ceph USB gateway. So just a quick agenda for starters. Um, so I'll, yeah, just start off with a, a brief introduction to the project, uh, then move on to, to Ceph, just give a quick overview of uh, Ceph and sort of how it works. Um, then on to the USB storage stack in kernel, um, so what I've basically made use of there, and we'll finish off with a demonstration. Uh, so this project started yeah, end of last year during um, Hack Week 13. So uh, if you don't know, Hack Week 14 starts today, so um, happy hacking next week. But um, anyway, back to last year. Um, I was considering what to work on for Hack Week. Um, I had a, an arm board uh, gathering dust in the corner and thought, okay, I'd, I'd like to do something with this board. Um, my, my day job is, is Ceph, so I thought, okay, I'll put these two things together and I will work on a Ceph USB storage gateway. Um, so the idea with this is we have our storage cluster, um, potentially you know, at home in our basement, and we'd like to access that storage somehow from, you know, from mobile phones, from uh, smart TVs, from whatever device with a, a USB port. Um, the idea is that I can then just plug in my USB gateway and access my Ceph storage cluster with, uh, with that utility. So yes, as mentioned, the, the goals of the project, um, or the main goal is just to allow this Ceph storage to be accessed by any device with a, a USB port. Um, a secondary goal was um, also to be able to, to boot from um, a Rados block device image. So um, yeah, most laptops can boot from USB, so this means, yeah, basically it should just be a matter of connecting this device and I can boot from the Ceph cluster. Um, yeah, one other goal was just that uh, the configuration would be sort of as, as straightforward and easy as possible. So, you know, I didn't want to have to log into the board just to, or if I change a key ring or a, a configuration parameter. So now on to Ceph. Um, hopefully most of you saw Owen's talk yesterday. Um, I don't really want to go into to big detail, but um, yeah, Ceph is basically uh, an amazing open source project um, which allows, allows you to um, yeah, pull storage across a number of uh, nodes um, and that storage is then highly available so that if anything dies within those nodes, you know, potentially uh, you have a power, power failure or a disk dies, uh, you retain access to your storage. Um, yeah, so it's all open source. It's, um, Self-managing, self-healing in that, you know, if you do have a failure, um, it will then, you know, reconstruct your, your data with the amount of redundancies you require. And it's also incredibly scalable, so, uh, yeah, you know, you can run petabyte or you can store petabytes of information on, on Ceph. Uh, so on the user access side, Ceph is generally broken up into sort of three main uh, protocols or components. So we have on the left there uh, the Rados gateway and this is uh, basically supports the uh, RESTful protocol, so Amazon S3 or uh, OpenStack Swift. Um, we have the Rados block device interface um, which is, is what I'm using for this project um, and that's basically a, a block device image which is then backed by objects on the Ceph cluster. And finally, on the right, there's uh, the Ceph file system, which is uh, yeah, a POSIX file system on top of uh, the Ceph object store. So a bit more on uh, Rados block device, or RBD. Um, with this, we have, as mentioned, a, a block device image, which is then stored across the Ceph cluster. So obviously, that inherits the um, reliability and scalability aspects of Ceph. Um, has a number of other neat features, so um, they're thin provisioned, um, you can resize them online, grow and shrink. Uh, they support, or you can do snapshots and clones of those images. 
And uh, on the access side, we have uh, the Linux kernel. Uh, so uh, from the kernel, we can locally map a Rados block device image that appears as a local device and then use it like any other disk. And we have uh, user space clients as well um, for other applications. So now on to the, the hardware I use for this project. Um, yeah, actually, I've got one. Yeah, so uh, basically I'm using a, a QB truck, um, which is just a low-end um, ARM v7 CPU, uh, dual core with two gigabytes RAM. Um, yeah, just sort of pretty slow, cheap board, but um, this is all I had access to, so uh, is also capable of doing the job. Um, my main requirement for the hardware was that it had um, mainline kernel support. So um, obviously I didn't want to be playing with um, yeah, rewriting new USB driver code. So um, yeah, the good thing about the QB truck is that uh, the Sunsea community have done a lot of work upstream to get uh, basically all the components on the board working. Uh, there's also an, a Tumbleweed port, uh, so thanks to the, the ARM guys, Andreas, Dirk, uh, Alex, they've done great work getting the Tumbleweed port up for that. Um, it is sort of a bit large for something which I'd hoped would be a USB key. Uh, there are yeah, probably half the components on the board aren't needed for this project, but um, yeah, it's what I had access to. So. Uh, just a, a quick look at a couple of alternatives. So um, there's a, an open source hardware chip computer, um, which has just been released by uh, NextThingCo. Um, and there's on the right, uh, yeah, MIPS uh, embedder board, um, both of which can run Linux and should um, be basically potential options for this project. And both are also around the 10 euro mark, which is uh, obviously a benefit. So now on to USB storage. Um, so I've sort of covered the, the Ceph side and um, what I was using for hardware. Next was just plumbing in the uh, USB side. Um, so within Linux, uh, there are sort of a couple of options there. So there's the um, mass storage kernel module and the TCM kernel module. Um, both are basically the, the storage USB gadget um, layers. And they then support uh, yeah, the uh, two SCSI over USB standards. Um, so we have support for some of the uh, interesting performance-based features. So uh, high-speed support means um, queuing, command queuing on the uh, device. And super speed, I think, is um, also out of order completion. So there are, um, yeah, there's impressive support on the kernel side for, for acting as a USB storage device. I should mention at this stage here yeah, that I had to, so some of these features won't ena weren't enabled on the Tumbleweed kernel, so I did pull down a, a, a recent mainline kernel and basically just uh, ran that on the board. So now on to how the, the board is basically put together or how the, the boot sequence of the board. Um, so the idea is um, you have your board, uh, you plug it into your machine, you then need to point this board at your Ceph cluster. So that involves getting the uh, Ceph configuration and keyring for authentication, um, and also telling it which image uh, should be mapped or exposed by the board as a, a USB storage device. Once that's done, so this is handled via a uh, yeah, what I call a, a configuration file system. So basically, I, I, uh, I provision a, a RAM disk, um, format it with FAT so it can be you know, handled on Windows or Linux, and then uh, the user can then copy those uh, configuration files onto the board. Once that's ejected, uh, so we intercept or detect the eject event, um, and then we can go ahead and connect our, or map our Rados block device image and expose it via USB. 
So with that, I'd like to move on to the demonstration. Um, so with this I have, uh, or my setup here is I have on my laptop a Ceph cluster running uh, with uh, a few OSDs and a monitor node. Um, so this is, yeah, then my, my backing Ceph cluster. Um, at the front here I have uh, my QB truck board. And this QB truck is then connected by a network to the, the Ceph cluster, being the laptop. And finally, uh, on the uh, USB side, uh, the board has a USB on the go port, which is then acting in uh, device mode or slave mode. So first off, I'll just show how this is actually configured. So I'll plug this into my laptop. And I'll bring up the configuration file system. Uh, so there you can see um, basically this config drive. So this is um, backed by a RAM disk on the board. Uh, so here we have our Ceph configuration, the key ring to actually access the Ceph cluster, and finally uh, this USB config, and that basically says, okay, the, the image that I want to expose via USB is uh, this uh, USB named image in the RBD pool on the Ceph cluster. So once we're happy with that, um, which it all looks good, I've copied the, the key ring and config from my cluster, so I can go ahead and eject the device. And what we do then is, on the board, intercept the eject, and hopefully... Uh-oh. <laughs> uh, if you'd like to see a demo, come by the table later. It looks like uh, <laughs> I must have uh, done something wrong with the config there. Okay. Uh, <laughs> So once, normally once the configuration is ejected, uh, we then map the uh, Rados Block device image locally, and it comes up as a USB storage device. I was then going to show my Android phone connected and uh, copy a photo from the phone onto this device, onto my Ceph cluster. Um, yeah. If you'd like to see the demo, just come by later. It was working seconds ago, so. <laughs> Um, otherwise, yeah, a few other options for the project. Um, so on the performance side, as you'd expect with, uh, so this is a USB 2 um, interface. Uh, it's, it's not great. I was sort of seeing around 35 megabytes per second in and out. Um, so the, the USB is, uh, seems to be the bottleneck there. Uh, on the boot side, um, obviously you want the board to be booting as quickly as possible um, so that the storage is exposed uh, as soon as possible. Um, in terms of speeding that up, I looked at, or I did play with uh, running the, uh, or exposing the USB device from InitRD, so basically not booting into the full operating system, uh, just booting the InitRD and doing everything from there. That works, works well and sort of speeds up the boot time a lot. Um, yeah, for the TCM module, so currently I'm using the uh, mass storage kernel module, which has its own uh, SCSI emulation. Uh, I would have liked to have used the uh, TCM module, which then makes use of the uh, LIO SCSI stack, uh, so more mature. Um, thoroughly used uh, SCSI stack in the kernel. Um, I couldn't get that working with this hardware. I did get it working in my VM, so something's wrong there. Otherwise, a couple of other potential improvements. So um, this has four gigabytes of NAND on board, so um, we could make use of that for, for caching, so potentially running uh, DM cache or, or B cache on the board to, to cache locally. 
Um, another option would be uh, de-encrypt on the board itself as well. Um, so transparently handling compression, uh, sorry, encryption of, of data going in and out. Uh, otherwise, um, yeah, any questions? Sorry about the demo. I, it was working moments ago, so yeah, please just come by and uh, take a look. <laughs> Yes, Alex. Yep, this time the real Alex. Um, so, do you actually have images made of OpenSUSE and your tools and everything just assembled together so I can just take it, download it, put it on my board, and have it running? No, so I have basically the scripts I use to expose um, the, the ConfigFS and the image um, are in this repo, but otherwise, you do have to build your own kernel. Um, with those uh, USB gadget, uh, with USB gadget support. So, yes, I would like to get that into the, the standard um, QB truck config if it's possible or if, if you guys would be interested. Um, totally, yeah. Let's, let's just make sure that all this works out of the box on all systems and then create images out of it. Cool. It, I don't see any reason why we shouldn't. Um, and then people can just go and take it on their boards that happen to support OTG and just expose them as Ceph clusters. Sounds good. <laughs> I should also say I managed to brick one board um, while I was working on this, playing with uh, lithium batteries. So if anyone wants a bricked uh, QB truck board, uh, I think it's just the PMU. So uh, yeah, just come see me if you want it. <laughs> Otherwise, yeah, thanks for attending. <laughs>